everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays Chess. Um, no, no uh, amount of words can make up for the mistakes that I've made in a couple of these recent chess videos, but we're just going to try to have some fun together, okay? We're going to try to get back to brass tacks. Are you? Come on, come on. You're really going to try to... You're going to try to hit me with, like, the scholar's mate by putting your queen out there right off the bat. Is, is on common? Yeah, wait a minute. Am I dumb? I... <laughs> I feel like we're okay with this. He wants to get some vulnerabilities on this pawn. We're, no, he's up in material. Why did I think we were tied in material? Anyway, long story short, I, I'm putting way too much sauce on it. But at the end of the day, I really think we just need to play a little slower. And we need to more carefully consider the moves that our opponent may actually make uh, in the process as well. Um, and we'll get back to it. You know, I, I've, I've played chess for a long time. It's, it's not like a, a linear um, sort of thing where you get better, like, in a straight line. You go through periods where you, you do worse. You go through periods where, where times are a little tougher. Um, and, you you know, you, you come out of that hopefully having learned some lessons that make your life uh, a little bit easier in the future. So, by the way, why did I do this exchange instead of... Uh, I mean, I guess you could make it look like that instead, but no, it's exactly the same. Um, why did I do that exchange instead of what you might, might have considered more likely uh, to have worked out nicely, which is like, uh, just take with this knight? Or, or take with this knight first. I didn't want to leave the queen some vulnerability there. Um, I also... Or I didn't want to leave this pawn vulnerable to the enemy queen that was right there. Or right wherever they were. Um, now I will say, my opponent has an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage is that they're up by a pawn. The disadvantage is that they're less developed. This becomes a, a an outrageously powerful square for us. We get to uh, dictate some of the tempo of where things go from here. This knight is not going to be strong. So this is where it would be uh, wise for us to come up with some sort of plan. And and one such plan, we, we should get our rooks activated sooner rather than later. Um, a knight to here to put some pressure on this pawn, I think, is okay. And we can start to, again, they're going to have to develop their pieces a little bit. I really don't love this move out of them. And I think our knight is actually stronger here. And if they push, the, like the further out these pawns get, uh, the less the less valuable they are at actually um, protecting the, the pieces that are behind here. Because if, if they push to here, we actually get a pretty nice road to here. Which they can counter, but is going to be frustrating to do so. And if they move their knight here, for example, I mean, like... Well, obviously, we don't want to just take that. But um, what we can do is start to stack up, like, our rooks here, for example. And we, we can start to put, like, a lot of pressure. They, they will not want to trade their bishop for this knight. I would be happy to do so. Okay? So what do we like now? We really like this, I think. And then they have to find a way to get this rook out of there. The, now I'm just running it through in my head. I'm like, what if they do this? If they do that, we can go here. They'll respond with rook to here. And we're kind of stuck. So that's not... If they do this, we would be we would benefit from falling back a little bit. So now let, let's walk this through again. Um, if we do that, they'll just move like here, for example, or you, any, anywhere. They get kind of a free rook move, which I don't like. What I would like to do instead is maybe force their, their bishop away. And uh, okay, actually, I, I love the trade, and it creates a nice little diagonal for us here. Um, I think we would like to protect this square. We really don't want to trade here. I have no problem, though, pushing uh, pushing these pawns up and trying to create an attack on the king side. Um, fairly even game, I would say we're probably a little behind. This knight being gone would be awesome, by the way. So if we, if we walk it through, let's assume like I do this. They'll probably go here. Do I mind... 
I don't think I mind at all. We're trying to create some leverage on this pawn. And it, I mean, if they want to push the pawn, if, as long as this knight's gone first, we can always just take up this sweet diagonal again. So I think we love this. And I expect that. And I expect that that is actually fine. Because they have no bishops... Um, and, and obviously we've traded queens already. I actually don't mind pushing my, my kingside pawns out a little bit. I don't feel too threatened by that. Um, now, I don't, I don't really know where you're going here, but I'm okay with it. I think we want to keep more pressure on these pawns and just uh, recover the space that we just had. This is They can't move this because this is threatened. Um, and in the meantime... If we get like this rook to here, then we can play this. They've got to respond. And then we could actually start to take um, take the pieces. So here's an interesting one. What if, and it's a big if, what if we played this? They're going to move, let's say, to here. Sorry, I'm leaning off frame. We take. They probably take. We take. And then we got a nice little diagonal. I think it would be better for us if we just did this first. And now they, they, there's 20 reasons they, they don't want to lose this pawn. Um, I don't want them to cover this square. That's what scares me. Now, we also have to watch out for forks and stuff like that. Um, like, this is a powerful position for their knight to be in. But then, like, we would just respond with, like, that. We'd be okay. So I think this becomes an insanely good move for us. I'm always concerned, by the way, when uh, it says Karo Khan defense, but there's no... <laughs> there's no variant. Like, did I screw it up that bad at start? Maybe. So let me walk it through. I do this. You're probably going to do that. I can take this. You can't do squat to me. And then... We can actually like get a check and get on on, on that pawn as well, um, and and if this pawn's gone, then this becomes vulnerable and kind of like the whole enemy defense is falling apart. And our bishop starts to get into the game, and all of a sudden I'm starting to feel like I'm not in a horrible position against Jarek. And in fact, now that I think about it, we actually have like a well, actually that doesn't work because of that, but yeah, this guy needs to go, which is not easy. Um, but we can always just fall back. Actually, no, we'll just check you now. Because you moved your most powerful piece. And now I'm like, maybe we'd benefit from this. And we get both rooks? No, because he would just take me. We just take just take the rook. <laughs> I was like, I think I, I think I've made this much worse, in my opinion. But um, now I would like to. I mean, we can start to put some pressure on the pawns. I hate that the night. I like now. I want to trade. Basically, we got tons of time. Like, just don't don't throw this one away. Being a fool, right? I think getting, um, like, that's a spot we got to watch out for, obviously. Um, but I think stacking up here is okay. We really want to trade rooks now. So I expect, like, this move, kind of, to set up for this. No, because the bishop's still there. I'm not worried. Oh, I am worried about this guy. You can just take this pawn. <laughs> So I, I definitely think we want to get this guy out of here. We need to not walk into like some kind of horrible fork though. Like this to here. No, we would just take. So he's definitely going to like fall back to here. Maybe here. Okay. Then. I like this. And I definitely have to let you know that every bone in my body is telling me to start trading pieces because we have a material advantage. Hmm. 
but I'm trying to get more comfortable with the idea of not doing that. Because I know that that's like a very actionable piece of criticism we've been dealing with. <laughs> Just because a trade is available doesn't mean you have to take the trade right away. Like, obviously, this knight is here. And, you know, I mean, it's not necessarily even a bad trade because this knight is doing a lot more than the bishop. However, the knight is probably less valuable than the bishop in the end game. Um, at least the way the board looks to me with these nice open diagonals. One of, the, one of these days. I also, like, I wonder, like, can't we... It, it's all about finding ways to, like, apply leverage, right? So, right now, the only safe squares for the knight are here. I think I want to force a trade now. Previously, I wasn't that into it. But if I can go rook versus knight, I think I would be happy. Because, like, what are you trying to do here? I don't know. Probably trying to go here, then here, maybe. But now I'm like, okay, I check, you take, I take. You're forced to go here. Then I take, you take. I start to like my advantage a lot. I think. We don't even have to take this if we don't want to. But getting their rook out of the equation means a lot to me. Um, and now I want to start like attacking these pawns. I think I do want to trade here. And let's start let's start wrecking some pawns. So I was worried about this, but we'll just put up some protection here. And we're kind of we're in a little bit of gridlock. The knight can't really move. My rook can't really move either. We're only at a two-point advantage, but it, it, it does matter. This is obviously bad for us versus this, and this is scary, but this versus this is extremely great for us. So what do we want to do? We just want to find a way to pick off some pawns, is really what it's all about. Um, so now I actually quite like putting some pressure on the king, or on, on the knight, I should say. Because they might be forced to, like, they might consider knight there, which is very good for me. Because I check, and then I take a pawn, and we've started to make, um, we started to dismantle them a little. That's the other one I thought could be possible. Um, so then you think, okay, what comes next? What comes next is we threaten this pawn, which they're then forced to move up. They're forced to defend in some way. That That is a way. And then we go back here to threaten this. They'll probably go here. And we got to reconsider now. Like maybe now do I go here, for example? <laughs> in order to check again. Um, I don't like giving up this coverage that we have of these two squares just to get a check. Maybe they have another move up their sleeve. Um, they would be forced, if they still want to defend their rook, they'd be forced to go here. Then if I go here, they go here. And then I start attacking these pawns, maybe. Okay. Ah, uh, we'll get like a, yeah, okay. No, I think I'm okay with this. <laughs> And because I've had a chance to puzzle out the moves in advance, you literally have... I mean, you have you have more than one legal move. I suppose you could go there, now that I think about it. But then I get to go here if I like it. Now, what do I like about here? You're forced to go here, 
we can now put some pressure on the knight again, and the king can't actually back it up. We're trying to avoid a situation where we're forked. Like, that's the square that forks us, so we're safe. <laughs> gives, it gives a knight attack on these two, but it can't be done. All right, so have, have we gotten to a position where we're going to get something out of this? I think so. And we're, we're, there's a really good uh, emphasis right now. There's a really good, like, master class on the difference between a knight and a rook in endgame, I suppose. Um, now, I think it's very simple. You just check and you take the knight. That was a... I don't know if they had other moves now that I think about it. I mean, this this is better. That was a really good game. I, I think that we've redeemed ourselves somewhat. Let, let's look at the analysis for that. I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself. Uh, especially considering we were down and it was a little zany early. I think I think we did a really good job of, of keeping our fundamentals strong and playing one of the better games we played over the course of the series. We were 93.5% accuracy. One mistake is pretty good. And, I mean, I feel like Jarok didn't, didn't play a terrible game there. They were up by as much as 1.7, and then it it got bad. So, all right. Like, by the way, I don't think I punished this well enough, but this is a, a not very good move for white in most situations. Tomo wants to, he wants to go outside. I'm just going to open the door for him, and then, okay. Like, why? Is, why is this move bad? Well, it's great if you're playing against somebody that doesn't know what they're doing because you're going to like start to move out here and you know threaten mate and who knows, maybe they do something silly like that trying to defend the mate and then you know you start to like just... Basically, you're making them work pretty hard, but normally like that's an amazing spot for the knight. The queen has some protection down here for your d-pawn if you try to push for some center control. So this is not... Outside of middle school, this is not considered a high-value move anyway. As you can see, they say it's excellent, but it actually gives up. Like, as you can see, white is 0.2 up. This actually is like a quarter pawn loss, which makes a difference. But anyway, um, so now they actually consider that we're in a superior position. They like the take. They like the take. This move is fine. They do not like that. That was our one inaccuracy or one of our few inaccuracies. It cost us a pawn. So you can see why the numbers going from negative 0.3 to 0.7 uh, make a lot of sense. Okay, so they really did not like our early game. Yeah, because the queen could literally just take that right now, which they should have done. But we, we got out of it. Okay, so they like white by two points here. I, I actually thought about c8, you know? The, the reason I didn't like c8 in my head, and the engine doesn't see too much of a difference. Actually, it, it sees uh, e6 as being better. But uh, the reason I don't like it is because it kind of lets them do knight to c3 for free which they would want to do anyway, you know? Like, it's the best position for their knight, so I didn't want to give them that for free, but... All right, so they castled. We moved our bishop out, which they they like it better than the best move. I didn't like that move. It just impedes the knight, in my opinion, for no reason. Um, and we castled because we always do. And then they got a nice center at d4, and they didn't like this, this move either. Um, they consider it, it very bad. Wonder why they like b5. I don't know, to be honest. So I, I really liked my knight position here. This is really where we started to piece things together, I thought. They, they hate this move, and I agree. Um, they don't like that move from me either, but you know, at least we have a plan now. We're not just making moves for no reason. Um, they move there. We go here. They're big fans. They still like h6 for like escalating danger. But I'm like this. In my opinion, I'm like this bishop doesn't go anywhere. And stop saying it's best when this move is. It has a higher score. <laughs> oh, it has a higher score for white. That explains it. <laughs> All right. So, you know, we, we recouped a little bit on that. What did we do following this? I think maybe now we did h6. It seems like me. Yeah. They like h6. Um, they don't like it as much as f to d8. But they like the take. They like the take. So they consider that a good move. They consider that the best move. Still a two-point advantage for white here. And then this is where I started to get a little bit more aggressive with my, my kingside pawns. I was very happy to do so. I'm trying to get in the habit of like, hey, let's make sure we're constantly like actually working towards something. Instead of just like responding to my opponent, let's give them something to respond to. And my plan here was like, okay, if, if all else goes according to plan, I could start to like, you know... Move, I guess you would, would take there, but you get the idea, you know. I'd start to, like, threaten their king side with my king side pawns. Because I really do, I have an advantage in that sense. I have a disadvantage in the game. But they have three king side pawns. 
I have all four. So I can start to use that even though it's a slight edge, I can start to use that supremacy to apply some some pressure over here. But anyway, they move back. I, uh, I did the best move, which is nice. Start to put pressure on this pawn and, and try to take control of the diagonal. They hate that. And I agree. Um, and then they they like this move for me. We're, we're much closer to an even game. And if you remember, on this move, we did puzzle out that this might be for the best. And then they do this. And then we take. And then they take. And we take. And it's like a we, we win a little bit. We ended up winning more by not doing the best move. Just because our opponent responded badly, I think. So we did this. That's a very questionable move that now puts me with the advantage. Now from here, I can tell you how it went. We did this. <laughs> they did this. We did this. And then if I, I'm trying to remember how this went down, I feel like they did that, which was absolutely horrible. Is that, is that really how it went? I mean, that yeah, that's, that's just an outrageous um, mistake at this point. So from, from which point the game went check. It went like that. We're up by about five points right now. What, what's our advantages? Well, we're um, one pawn down. Not great. But we're a bishop up. Very good. We have a bishop rook versus two knights. You know, we're just canceling the rooks out here. You'd much rather have bishop than knight, probably, with so much open space. And you'd much, much rather have rook than knight uh, at this stage of the game. So, they like this move okay. They prefer the kingside pawn push. But that's okay. We start to threaten this pawn. They have to respond. They made a response. Um, they wanted the escalating danger, which is fine. But I understand why they would keep their knight here. Um, it, it does do a good job of stifling my bishop. We push the knight out, which they consider the best move. They fell back here. They're going to love this move for a while because they never move this knight. Um, so they go here. What did we do following that? I think we stacked the rooks. Stacked the rooks to get more coverage in this file. And, you know, it's the only wide open file. So having control of this space is very important. Um, they, they like that move okay, but... Yeah, they, I'm validated here that they actually enjoy the the swap. <laughs> now, they actually love the swap for the knight too, which surprised me because traditionally you think that a bishop is worth more than a knight. But the closer you get to the end game, I guess when you have an advantage, you just want to keep it moving. And then I was actually like really proud of myself for the way that we played this section. Um, and you can see we're making a lot of, like, best moves. It's about constantly... Like, they can't start to dismantle my pawn structure if I'm constantly threatening theirs. They, they love this. I'm, I'm so stoked that they consider this so strong. Like, look at how many best moves in a row we had there. And then that's where they resigned. <laughs> All right, we'll... Uh, We'll do another one here really quick. I, I was proud of that game. I thought I thought we played a much smarter game there. Um, let's hope that we uh, can continue that trend here. So we're, we're going to be playing the black pieces again against bad Bishop Jones. Probably time to start working in a new uh, defense as black as well. The Karo Khan, I like it. Like I feel like it's kind of hard to mess up. Um, and I don't really like the exchange variety. I don't know what I don't know if this is normal. <laughs> Certainly doesn't feel normal. One of my next moves will be e4. I have to get into a position where I can protect e4 with a knight to c6. And then we've got some great control of the center. And uh if if they if they want to take that's fine. We'll end up doing a, a take with uh c5. And we're in not a symmetrical position, but a position I don't mind. Uh especially if it stays closed. We don't mind the bishop for knight exchange that totally screws up their pawn structure. Um, and what what's our weak points? Uh, weak pawn, uh, you know, what's what's our weaknesses right now? I would say uh, black square bishop is not doing a whole heck of a lot. Like we might even say it's a bad bishop Jones three. I just noticed they're rated sixteen forty as well. So we're dealing with the uh, we're dealing with a gamer. There's no doubt about that. What I probably would not do is. Uh, this, not so much because of what we usually concern ourselves with, which is like attacks on the king. Um, and I think that they're going to, they move this out of the way so that they can move the bishop here. So this move we previously thought of is not as strong. Um, but one of the one of the lines I actually kind of like here, to be honest with you, is uh, like bishop to, yeah, I don't mind this. Um, bishop to e e6. And then a push to c4. 
obviously like they have too much coverage on it right now but if we ever want to open the game up it might look something like that we also we have some other uh, aggressive approaches like for example queen to b6 forces them to maybe do probably they would just do that or this or maybe that to protect it but it, it may be Allows us to get some more pressure out of our queen while, while maintaining some tempo. I don't really understand that move. Um, maybe it's to give the knight a spot to go so that they can develop the queen. Um, what we're going to do is maybe uh, force... or Maybe they're just trying to prevent the bishop from going there, which I wasn't going to do in the first place. But And Tomo wants to come back in. All right. Hello, Tomo. Hello, Tomo. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I don't think it's a bad trade. I also, I don't really mind if you want to trade this either. Um, I would say we probably castle kingside here. Because I always do. Thought of a cool meme today. It was like, I'm not like other guys. I castle queenside. That's the whole joke, by the way. <laughs> Um, well, we definitely don't want to do this. Maybe, um, we can get, we can get some cool stuff. Dude, I don't think they want to do this, just to be honest. Like, I don't, I don't think they want to castle queenside. If they do, I'm not going to stop them. Um, but I feel like their pawn structure over here is so toasted. That I, I can't imagine that would be on their list of things to do. Obviously, you kind of look at the pin over here as like a trap that maybe you could catch him in. If they castle here, their king will be here. And their queen will be in front of it. So the already reinforced bishop is in a pretty nice spot. Um, okay, so they, they, they recognize they're not going to castle kingside. And they were probably looking for something like maybe we're doing queen to b3 next. Um, the, the flip side, though, is that we can we can't really move our queen. We could... T oh, no, I hate to take. Never mind. It's it's a complicated game, and you get the idea this is the kind of game uh, they might enjoy playing right here. So this is fine, except we do um, lose a pawn in a terrible spot. So we might actually... And this is very wild. Um, we might actually consider doing something like king to h7 so we can push this pawn does make things a little scary but let's you know you don't have all the time in the world they're gonna find this a highly questionable move i think but the knight is very strong here and our bishop is kind of yeah ideally i would love for their knight to actually fall back and then no actually i, I still hate that I, I i don't mind that though i like the trade quite frankly so the oh we got a Oh, you know what they're doing? They were trying to trap our bishop. We take here, and then... Maybe not, but... Either way, it's okay. Um, I, don't, I don't really understand this, like, where they're at right now. I feel like we like uh, rook to c8. The reason is, then we can take and then plant our knight right there. Um... And if they take, that's fine. We get to reestablish our pawn structure. And they have a pretty glaring weakness here. Uh, if they don't take, maybe we take. It's a very powerful position for us to be at. But we need some, we need some uh, defense on this pawn. So that's very interesting. Um, obviously, their next move would be here. And I cannot take. No, I can take. Um, one thing that interests me, though, is like, what, what if now we just took? Let's escalate the danger on them a little. They, they can't push, um, clearly. So they might start to stack up here, but I, I don't mind our pawn structure, honestly. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the choice. This thing's undefended. The easiest thing for you to do would take. But now we, we actually like the control that we have over this diagonal. And I'm not, like, I'm not scared of that at all anymore. If anything, um, so where's the weak spots for the enemy? I actually don't dislike the take here, but we'll we'll talk about it. I think you want to stack up rooks and start to do some damage here. 
Unless I'm missing something, like, prodigious. Maybe they do that next, but I don't see it unless they defend it first. So let's, um, let's stack up. And if, if they want to try to, like, assert control, then go ahead. I'd, I'd love to see who the engine prefers. Because I genuinely think I prefer my position. If you want to take, go ahead. You, you kind of have to at this point, or you just move off and lose the tempo. So we still have some control over this file, which is the whole reason we wanted to be here in the first place. Um, so they're not going to defend this pawn, which is interesting. Uh, so one thing I kind of like here is, is what if we... Doesn't really work. <laughs> what if we start moving our queen back in order to reinforce the file? He's probably going to castle, is the thing. So what do we like? I mean, we love our rook right here. It really takes control of this area, puts some pressure on this fairly weak pawn, and we can start to maybe figure out what we're going to do from that point onward. Um, it's hard to get pressure on it, but it's not impossible. We really want to avoid the push here. It's like, here's here's one thing I like, okay? Current setup, maybe they, they love it, maybe they hate it. We are going to end up giving them some control over this file here, actually via this, but over the diagonal, I should say. Oh, no, over the file as well. If I were them, I would still take. Because you get great control with the rook here. They're going to push instead. Um, which I honestly kind of like. Um, so immediate game plans. Queen here. Or queen here. They will not take. They, they might do this. They won't swap queens. Because our pawn is so close to the end. So I do not mind this position. So I, I actually feel like our next few steps of uh, gaming uh, look a little bit like pushing these pawns. That way, we, we want to two-for-one these pawns at some point. Um... So that we can get a pawn to the end. Their queen is like, it can't do anything. It's beautiful. And they need to defend this. And they need to defend this. And they actually probably need to defend that. We might trade a bishop for two pawns at this stage. And how are you going to break through? Like, they, they have no means to break through. For a game that's so even in material, I feel like we're like a positional god right now. Now, that doesn't mean we couldn't make a mistake. But I, I'm at least proud of the video today. <laughs> and I think, like, if I were in their shoes, I'd be like, what do I even do right now? Like, do I just make kind of like a dead move with my king? Or, like, the way that they're supposed to try to get some leverage out of this would probably be to, like, use their queen to reinforce this king side and then make a king side push with the pawns. But, like, what do you do? Especially, like, us being so entrenched on a dark square here is really tough for them. I guess they could also, like, we're going to do things in the process, but they could do, like, you know, I get that the queen is there, but you get the idea. I, I think this is a horrible move um, that I'm in love with because we put them in check. Never mind. Maybe it's not so bad. Do we mind the trade? We'd prefer not to because we're in a stronger position. I didn't, I literally just didn't even consider that. Um, but at any point, we could two for one. I, I still don't know. I guess they're going to try to push down here, which makes sense. Um, we're going to push here instead. We still don't want to trade. Still don't want to trade. We're close. Oh, you know, they want to get the bishop out. No? I feel like they're just going to do that again, which is actually. Totally fine, because ne next we push. 
They have they have managed and they did really well in doing this. They managed to get some extra space. But they still can't really move. Cuz I'll just take this. What but if they do this, then I take that. It's like is I'm I'm not upset at all. Um I will say that they got out of it better than I expected. This is a thinking man's game. So I don't... I think they're probably going to take... Do I, I don't want to give them the chance, though. If I, uh, oh, But then they can get some pressure on me. Okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do that. Which is a little spicy, um, for sure. We're gonna we're gonna start escalating some danger elsewhere. We put some pressure on them here, and we we're now tied in material again. But now we're focusing on a different side. Now I don't mind this pawn. It kind of sucks, but I don't mind it too much because of the fact that we get so much extra threat out of it. Um, like this is dangerous, of course, but we should, in theory, be able to get in like a block. I think we still like this. Why? This is scary. Don't get me wrong. But. Is it as scary as like that? And then I now we trade. And then we take and we're up by two pawns. Well, we won't be trading anymore. That's for certain. Um. We, we could have initiated the trade there. Ah! That's terrible! Um, so I lost. Um, genuinely just lost on, on hanging my queen. I've decided I am no longer proud of this video and I quit chess. I, that's it. I quit chess forever. Um, and good game to you, sir. I do not support the game of kings any longer. This is like you push, I go here, you go here. I take, you take, you get a queen. That's We have such a good positional advantage. I, you just resign this. It's not out of BM yet again. It's not out of BM. It's literally just, you know, they... I blundered so badly they got a huge win. So, I, But I, there's a lot to learn from this game. Um... The graph is going to be like, why well, really? It's going to be like, um, but that's that's an embarrassment. Yeah, we were up by four, and then you know times change. Uh, so I I really like the way this game developed though. Again, it's not about winning and losing really in chess, uh, at least at the level that we're at. Like I really feel like it's about learning some valuable lessons from each game. So already the engine loves our our position. And it still likes our position. We, I, you know what I'm proud of myself for? At no point did we feel tempted to like trade into this uh, just to be, you know, just because it was unresolved. I'm really, I'm, I'm genuinely proud of the way we played this game. Because we, we wrenched an advantage out of a position where it, you wouldn't necessarily, so maybe it did want the take there, but it wrenched a, an advantage out of a position that we didn't think we could get an advantage out of because we didn't have material, but... Now that was, yeah, they're like, what are you doing here? And now I'm stupid. Like, why didn't I just take the knight? Oh, you know what? Okay, so we put some pressure on the queen. And then we still didn't take the knight, which we, we tunnel visioned into our own game plan. The fact that we're still in control here is hilarious. But we got to start looking for hanging pieces more, uh, more regularly. That being said, it still loves where we're at. Even though we keep losing some advantages... I mean, they're doing the same. D takes... Oh my god, dude, this hurts. That's a check with a discovered attack on the queen. So you do that. Uh, they do this. Take, take. You win the game. 
Unless you blunder your queen away. Um, I mean, and, and this is where I was like, you know, we have a very nice advantage at this point. And especially, like, well, we, we have a, a market advantage. Let's put it that way. We should have immediately taken this pawn. We did not. We did that instead. Um, and now we've kind of given up our advantage. But now we've gotten it back. <laughs> and we've still got it. And we've still got it. And that's where you lose. But anyway, it was a fun one nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Some good games. Some big blunders. Move slower. And then also, this is a big note to self. Don't, uh, like, make sure you're looking for hanging pieces. Embarrassing. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!